Sometimes you start a painting without any deeper thought or specific idea. You just go where your mind takes you and you end up with a piece that you absolutely love. But then, other times you have a very clear vision, but things aren't going as planned. What are you gonna do? Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. I'm Monica and in this video I'm going to share with you my journey of repetitive failure and artistic self-doubts that ultimately led to a success story. Most of you know me for my acrylic gouache reviews and it sure doesn't come as a surprise that this was my medium of choice for the piece you're going to see me paint today. This time, before we jump into the painting process, I want to share with you quickly how I planned out the piece. Not only because I feel like this crucial step is oftentimes left out by art YouTubers, but also because the struggles I have had are rooted in the planning stage. Whenever I want to do a polished piece, I tend to sketch out the idea digitally because I find it easier that way to scrap things that I dislike, as well as doing salt line art and color mockups. The software that I use are Clip Studio Paint for the sketch and coloring, as well as PureRef for having all your references at display in one place on a large canvas. Like most people, I also use Pinterest for browsing ideas, and this is where I found this image that is the inspiration for today's artwork. At first glance, it doesn't look that special. It's just a basic white girl with a cute dog, and it looks like a commercial shot actually, but there's just something about it. The derpy yet adorable look on its face and how they look like they are BFFs. All that really appealed to me. So I decided to interpret this composition and idea in a different way while challenging myself. And girl, a challenge it was. Since I'm not experienced enough painting people of color, I collected a bunch of portrait references and threw them into Pure Ref. And I did the same with pictures of pit bolts, color schemes, and pattern ideas. Back to Clip Studio Paint, here's the actual steps of my planning. Firstly, I straight up traced the reference image using very basic shapes. I know, genius artist move. And then I did a rough sketch over it, all while checking the reference images. I didn't care too much about clean lines just yet. Next step was to tackle the composition, so I threw in a Fibonacci curve. Now, there are many different rules for composition, but I figured out quickly that this golden ratio grid was fitting. I assume the photographer who took the reference photo staged it with the Fibonacci curve in mind. The next step was the clean line art, which is my favorite thing to do. And I did the dog and the woman on their own layers, so I could rearrange or transform them separately if ever needed. As I do all this for the purpose of having a reference for the actual traditional piece, it's a juggle between not spending too much time on the color scheme, while also having enough information to not feel lost when you take your paints out. This time I took it a little further and made a blended render, which turned out to be a huge mistake and you will see why later on. I experimented with different color schemes and I even asked my Instagram friends what they liked best, but eventually I decided to go with my initial idea. In order for all elements to stand out, I tweaked the colors a bit and I double checked if there is enough contrast and a good way to do this is setting your image to black and white. Lastly, I save several image files, two for the line art and one of them with lower opacity. And the third image I will need is the color version. And what I like to do is to eye drop colors in the image so I have an easier time mixing the right tones with my paints. The light gray version of the line art is what I print out to trace onto the paper. And as you can see, I used a colored pencil for tracing, so I can see exactly which lines haven't been traced yet. 
Now to the actual painting process. This piece was done in the course of two months, which some of you might find really long, which it definitely is. But considering my working schedule, usually 12 hour shifts, I sometimes go for many days in a row without having any time to paint whatsoever. The planning part seems tedious and like too much preparation, though for me it's absolutely crucial because once I find some time for art making, I can jump right in without too much guesswork. The other reason why it took me this long is that all the planning didn't work out too well this time, which this video is all about. Now let me talk about what went wrong, starting with number one, and that is not considering the medium. Even though this was planned to be done in acrylic wash, the color mock-up was made with very smoothly blended digital oil brushes, and I falsely thought I could do this great of smooth render with acrylics. In hindsight, this was not very smart of me, especially knowing how difficult it is to blend acrylic wash, possibly the fastest drying paint ever, and I still don't know what made me think I could do that. Which brings me to the next culprit, and that is overestimating both my skills and my mediums. Just because I reviewed acrylic wash doesn't mean that I'm experienced enough with it, but since I got lucky enough with my previous work to not have experienced major failure, I thought it's gonna be easy this time around. Same for painting darker skin tones. What can go wrong, I thought? Well, everything. I jumped into this without having researched how to render black skin. Turns out it is way more complex than just having lighter and darker shades of a color. I brightened the pre-mixed mid-tone base color with white. And this right here was the moment where I almost got my first mental breakdown. Please guys, do me a favor and watch tutorials on skin tones first. There's plenty of good ones out there. I thought I don't need that, I can just trust my gut, and girl how wrong I was. Luckily, acrylics dry permanently, so I was able to cover it up. However, you can't cover up mistakes endlessly. But I thought that I could. If things go wrong, I can just fix it later was my motto. But at some point the paper couldn't take any more layers without causing more problems. Yes, it is 100% cotton watercolor paper. And by the way, I always list my materials in the description box. But since I'm dealing with acrylics here, with every layer, I just sealed the paper more and more. Number three is not allowing myself to divert from the reference image. Instead of going with the flow, I tried to replicate a digital painting. There was a point where I really liked what I had so far, but the skin tone had a grayish undertone instead of a glowy peach. And my decision to get the skin tone to look just like my reference started a cycle of really poor ideas. First one being to pick Copic markers. Yes, you heard right. I thought Copics would work since they're translucent. And I even tested it before on a sheet of paper, but the acrylics had sealed the paper and what I got was a blotchy sheen with super crispy edges. I tried to blend it out with water immediately, but it didn't work. The marker survived it, by the way. Yeah, and after all this, I was looking at my reference image and I decided I want the skin to look soft and dewy with a blended gradient and since acrylics dry so quickly, I then decided to cover everything up. Though prior to this, I actually went in with colored pencils which looked even worse than the Copics. So I had no choice but to go with a coherent layer of acrylic gouache with a purpose to nail the skin with traditional gouache. Guys, the second I did this, I knew I effed up. And indeed, all got worse because the light gouache I layered on top would just lift, revealing really dark patches like everywhere. I abandoned the painting after it, being convinced that this was it, this cannot be fixed. The fourth reason what I think led to all this is 
Number four, not trusting the process or what I call the ugly face panic attack. We all know this is a thing and I actually asked you in my community tab how you feel about the infamous ugly face and I wasn't surprised that the vast majority either abandons the painting because of it or at least feels anxious during this stage. Whenever I see imperfection mid-painting, I have a hard time believing that things are gonna be alright and that it just takes more work and patience. I do know that in my case, the painting will look polished and finished once I add line art and highlights at the end, but I sometimes struggle to envision what it would look like later on, and that's when I personally tend to overwork or overrender a piece. Let me know in the comments if you can relate with that. The final issue I had was my fixation on the destination instead of enjoying the journey. After having struggled, abandoned and revisited this piece repeatedly for weeks only to mess things up even more, my internal dialogue was something along the lines of This, I quit YouTube, I suck, what's the point, you'll never become a professional artist, yada yada, all that. So yeah, I thought all hope was lost and the day I decided I will dump not just this project but everything for good, I watched that amazing video by Creating Cute Art and that was just the message that I needed. I will put up the link for you and I recommend you go watch it. All of her videos are just like happiness potions, by the way. And not only are her animals so adorable, I legit think there isn't any art YouTuber who enjoys art as much as her. And besides, I can't fathom how much amazing content she puts out several times a week sometimes. Anyway, um, back to her video. The message was basically, it's okay to feel good about your art. When I saw the title, I was like, whoa, 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 wait. There's people out there who love what they're doing? And then it struck to me because here's the thing. I started to make art years ago because I enjoyed playing with paints. I enjoyed experimenting and not thinking too much about it. To later be surprised by the results. I used to be proud of myself. Mistakes I used to perceive as happy accidents and <laughs> the outcome didn't matter too much anyway. I genuinely enjoyed the process. Her video really made me think and I realized this joy just went missing with my work lately. And instead of explorative curiosity, self-doubts, feelings of pressure and self-criticism have taken over. So, a huge thank you, Maggie, because from that day onwards, I felt way better. I tackled the painting again, I abandoned all the plans I had and became mindful and just in the moment, you know. I became aware of my inner critic and changed the narrative to something more optimistic. The skin looked blotchy and not flawless, so what? Let me add some freckles right there, and while we're at it, how about adding some intricate patterns with a uniball pen or some shiny shiny to her eyes and clothes? And when I became somewhat carefree, that's when the piece started to come together. So yeah, we are nearing the end of the painting and I guess my point is, it's just art. Your self-worth is not defined by how great of a job you make. It's just a painting and you have permission to fail. Indeed, you have to. Lewish wasn't born with her skills and there is no doubt Jaw Cooper has been an exceptionally great artist for years and it was her who just recently did not notice she gave her own character two left feet. Well, she was in a flow, I guess. Just when you think you screwed up, maybe you haven't yet. You may abandon it, you may try to fix it. Maybe without the mistake, your piece would not have become as good. Be proud of failure and be proud of success. To me, this painting is a huge success and that's not because I like the outcome. It's because I learned a lot about myself. Even if I had messed it up for good, it would still be a success. 
The fact that I like it now is just a bonus. Now I'm not gonna lie to myself and claim I will never experience any negativity around art ever again, but I know I will practice to be more mindful and forgiving. I rambled so much in this video, now it's your turn. I wonder, does any of that sound familiar to you? What do you struggle with the most in art making? And most importantly, I confess to you that I used alcohol markers on acrylics. Now let us all know the art sins you have committed. It's unfair if you keep them to yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, share it with someone who might need it, subscribe if you want to see more, and until next time, have a fantastic day.